but I can barely hear you. Gotcha. Uh, okay. So we're recording now, and I'll go ahead and move to the next one. All right, everybody, anybody have any questions about this example? Again, solving the variance and the standard deviation for um, this population. Any questions at all? All right. Let's go ahead and move to the next one. All right. So the reason, and I talked about it before, the reason we use a sample, okay, especially finding a standard deviation for a sample of data, is really to draw inferences about a population, All right? So this first bullet says the goal of inferential statistics is to draw general conclusions about a population. We have very, very limited information from a sample, and so we use that limited information to then draw those conclusions because more often than not, we're not going to have an opportunity to really draw all the information from, a, from an overall population, right? The sample will differ slightly from the population. Samples tend to be very uh, or less variable. Um, so when you talk about variability, they tend to be less variable because you're taking a sample and the sample usually doesn't have a lot of the extreme uh, extreme values, right? So with a normal population, you're going to have pop you're going to have values on the very extreme to the right and very extreme to the left. But for a sample, when you take a sample, usually you're going to get individuals who are kind of closer together, uh, which will provide um, less variability in that sample. Okay, when you compute the variance and the standard deviation the same way that you do for a population, so by using uh, the big N, um, it gives you what we call a biased estimate for the population values, right? And what it does is it kind of underestimates the population values in a way, right? So in order to correct for this, um, to correct for the bias, we have to find the sample variability. And the way we find the sample variability, especially knowing that uh, the sample has less variability, is we try to increase the variability by, by changing one specific thing in the, in the equations that we'll talk about, okay? So in order to increase the variability um, to, to make it a little more or less biased, we increase it by uh, dividing our variance or the sum of the squares by n minus one. And we'll talk about why we do that. Okay, we'll talk about why we do that next. Okay, but again, just, just know that the sample is always gonna be very, very, it's not gonna be as extremely different from the population, but it will vary and, and differ um, in some fundamental ways. And in order to make the biased estimate of the population values not biased, uh, is by doing something that we'll show you. I'll show you next. Okay. Any questions about this? And this is the key um, for this class. Is what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester is inferential statistics. So we're going to be taking samples and then using those samples to draw conclusions, general conclusions about a population. Right. So if I'm looking at IQ um, for a population of students. And I don't know the general, I don't know the IQ for every individual person. But what I can do is I can take a sample of that population. I could give them IQ scores. And if those, if that sample is representative of the population, I can get the average, I can get the standard deviation and the variance. And those estimates will give me a a pretty good idea of what the IQ is for the general population, even though I was not able to calculate or or give everybody an IQ test uh, for that population. So we use the sample uh, to draw conclusions, to be able to draw conclusions to the population. Okay. All right. So here's just an example of the idea of the variability and how samples are less variable um, than the population. So if you're looking at this distribution, Right. This is the population of adult heights, right? So in the original distribution, it's a very, very broad, very, very wide distribution, right? So you have individuals who lie uh, out here, like very, very short people or in the extremes. And then you have some very, very tall people in the extremes to the right, okay? They took a sample of N, minus, N equals 10, 
right? So these are my 10 individuals in my sample. If you look at the sample, you can see that the variability is very, very smaller than the overall population variability. You see that there are not as many extremes, right? So they're very, very clustered together. And so since they are very, very cl clustered together, then the variability or the variance and standard deviation is gonna be very, very small, right? And so in order to correct for this, I have to, again, do uh, the things that we're gonna do with this next, next equation. Okay, but this is just an example of showing that the sample has less variability uh, compared to the population. Okay, so the population variability is all the way out here from the dashed line to the dashed line, and the sample variability is from this dashed line to this dashed line. And again, we can see that it's a smaller variability between the sample and the population. Okay. So when we are calculating uh, the variance for a sample and the standard deviation for the sample. The only thing that changes, the only thing that changes for the, this, these equations are the notations. So instead of being uh, sigma squared, lowercase sigma squared, it is now lowercase s squared. And the, uh, the only other thing that changes is the n minus one instead of n, okay? So the n is um, the total number of group in the group in the sample and the minus one uh, indicates what we'll talk about the next is degrees of freedom so we'll talk about that as we, as we move forward okay the standard deviation equation is essentially the same the only thing is it's represented by little s okay so instead of it being sigma this value here uh, it is now little s and that's what would indicate whether you're doing it uh, the variance for a sample or the standard deviation for sample, okay? Any questions about this so far? Like I said, the only difference is the N minus one and the S. That's the only thing that you're replacing um, in the equation. All right. Any questions, any questions? All right. So, here is an example of a histogram for a sample with an n of eight, right? So you have an n, this is my mean, it's located here at this midpoint, and then this is my standard deviation, okay? That's, that's just the difference here, and then you have a four and a half difference to, um, to the largest number out here, right? So this is just identifying um, the distance. We're looking at a half point here, and then we're looking at an, an four and a half points uh, to the right. Okay, so that's all that means. You have a standard deviation, should be between a uh, half and four and a half. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere in between there. Okay, so that's how we would so identify that. Okay, so it should probably be about two and a half. If you got a half on the left hand side and four and a half on the right hand side, um, you divide that by two, you should get about two and a half for the standard deviation. And we could do it, and you would figure out that, yeah, you have something um, around two and a half for your standard deviation. Okay. All right. So when you are trying to calculate your sample variability, one of the key concepts in this chapter uh, is called degrees of freedom. Okay. And degrees of freedom can be a tricky topic for and tippy tri tippy uh, tri really tricky topic to explain but i'll try to try my best to explain it so that if you have any questions please stop me uh, and i'll explain it in any more detail about, as i can okay but for the population variance the mean is known okay so the mean is known and the deviations are computed from a known mean okay when we are trying to calculate the sample variance we are trying to estimate the population, okay? So we're trying to get statistics for a population, okay? We're trying to estimate the population variance and the population standard deviation, okay? So in this instance, when they give you a sample, they're only giving you a sample of say 10 individuals. You have to calculate your mean, and then you also have to calculate the variance and the sample standard deviation using an unknown mean population. So right now, all we have is the sample mean. 
Okay. And so what happens with that is when we use a sample question. Okay, stop me if you need me. Okay. So when we use a sample variance, the sample variance is using a sample mean. And the sample mean again restricts the variability, like we saw we saw in that, that previous slide. The population variability is a lot larger than the sample variability. And so when we use the sample mean, we're restricting that variability. The degrees of freedom is what we call the number of scores in the sample that are independent and free to vary. And I'll give you a better, I, I guess, an example of that um, as we move forward. Okay, I'll give you an example of that. Okay. But degrees of freedom, all you need to know right now is degrees of freedom for a sample is n minus one. Okay, that is the degrees of freedom for, or the, degree, the definition for degrees of freedom, just n minus one, okay? But this is a very important concept. So the number of scores in the sample that are independent and are free to vary. And I'm gonna do an example uh, here next. So let me stop sharing my screen and I'll show you uh, what I mean. Okay, let me move there. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example here. So this is my sample. We have a sample of, we got an N of three. Okay, and we have X equals, one, of my, one score is nine, the other score is two. Okay, I don't know the third score yet, okay? But I do know that my mean for this sample is five. Okay. In this example, again, I know my, my first score is nine, my second score is two, and I don't know my third score. Okay. What is that third score? How would I find that third score? Can you repeat that one more time? Sorry. Yeah. How would you How would you find the third score? All right. So you have a mean of five. Wouldn't you solve for x? You could. Yeah. So you're you're solving for this missing score. How would you do that? Um, multiply. Wait. I'm trying to think. Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Try try it out. Because again, you have three scores, right? You have two known scores. And you have one missing, right? If I know that my mean is five, what does my total have to be? What is my total score? My total score, some of my total scores have to be. So what would be this value? If I had to sum all those scores up, what would it have to be to get me a mean of five? Think about it. Would it be five? Okay, so we got a little bit. Never mind. So in this particular case, if I have a mean of five and I have a, a total score of the three scores, this has to be 15. Okay. That has to be a 15 for my total, right? And right now, I got nine plus two is 11. So that final score has to be a four, okay? Has to be four. Why is that? Because- See, I thought that, but yeah. I didn't want to say I'd be wrong. You're fine. But again, it has to be four. So in this particular instance, since I know these first two and I know my meat is five, I know I have three scores. My degrees of freedom for this particular example is N minus one or three minus one equals two. Okay. So what degrees of freedom means is that I have 
a certain amount of independent variables or scores that are free to vary within my sample. Okay. So for this particular example, I could have selected um, any number of two of these values, right? I could have selected two, I could have selected three. And every time, once I select those two variables, the third variable, so again, I'll, let, let's try another. So I got X equals two. And I got the third, the second one is three. I got the same N, N equals three. And I get the same mean, okay, which is five. What would be my third score? Yeah, what would be my third score? Is it? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> is it 10? It is 10. It's 10. Okay. Absolutely, it's 10, right? Because I still have to equal to this 15, right? In order to get 15 divided by 3 gives me 5, right? I have to have 10. So you see in this particular example, I have two other scores. I, I, I have to know those two scores in order to get the final score. Right. So there are two scores that are free to vary in this particular sample. I, I chose in the first example a score of nine and the second of two. In the second sample, I chose two and the second three. Right. So those two scores, once you choose those two scores, those are the only two scores that are free to vary. And once you choose them, then you have to find and then you have to find that third score. And that is the definition of degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom just tell me that. There are independent scores that are free to vary, but once I select the those those say for this instance those two scores, that third score has to be a specific value because it has to match in order for me to get that mean. Okay, so that is degrees of freedom. Okay, here's another example. Okay, say I gave you five desserts. Okay, one dessert is ice cream, so I'll, I'll write it out. Okay, so I got five desserts. So one is ice cream. Somebody has cake. Somebody has cookies. Somebody has some pieces of fruit. And then somebody has a pie, a piece of pie. All right. So how many people we got in the room? We got, uh, we got five, five folks in the room. All right. So I'm going to give the ice cream. And this is ice cream, not ice. I'm going to give the ice cream to Layla. And forgive me if I spell your name wrong. Um, I'm going to give the cake to... There's an H at the end, but you did good. All right. I'm going to put that H at the end. All right. And then let's see who else. I'm going to give the cake to Jada. Okay. I'm going to get a cookie to Laquanda. Okay. Uh, I'll eat the fruit because I know y'all want the fruit. Okay. All right. So, given that Layla has the ice cream, Jada has the the the, the, the cake, Laquanda has the cookies, I have the fruit. If I'm giving uh, Wanisha an opportunity to choose something. What does she have to choose? Only thing left is pie, ain't it? That's it, right? That's the only thing she got left. So there is, in this particular case, the degrees of freedom 
is going to be n minus 1. And it's going to be 4. Okay? Because there are four items that are free to vary. And once all those items have been selected, the only thing else that Wanisha can select is pi. That's it. Right? So that is the idea behind degrees of freedom. Right? We use the degrees of freedom in order to determine, um, again, how many of those items are free to vary in our sample, okay? And when we talk about degrees of freedom for situations like this, again, all I need you to know is the formula. Degrees of freedom is N minus one. Obviously, you can know the definition, but really just know that degrees of freedom is N minus one. We're gonna be using that for the rest of the semester. Uh, so again, you may not need to know every uh, definition, but you do need to know this formula because we're going to be using it for the rest of the semester. I'm going to stop. What's up? Um, I had to join from my phone because I couldn't. I, I was trying to talk a long time ago and it would not work. For one, I hope this pie that you're giving me because I really would enjoy the ice cream or the cookies is a okay. chest pie because that's the only pie I like. So, only pie. Okay, I got you. I huh? like chest pie. Okay. Two, no, this not against me. Okay, two. So basically, in this type of equation, just so I know, because I promise you. I I was I was been trying to talk, but my computer wouldn't let me. So it's kind of like they'll give us the um the weird looking e x equals whatever number, and we just have to figure out what number the missing one, the miss the third missing number is to equal that, right? Yeah, that is just the, okay. So, but I just want to make sure it's always going to be given. The only this is just an explanation, right? It doesn't. So I'm not going to give you anything like this. All I need you to know is. That DF or degrees of freedom is n minus one. That's it. I just been okay. I just been trying to explain how and how we degrees of freedom and why we why we call it degrees of freedom. Sounds good. So, are you ending class? Cause I'm finna go. Hey, do your thing. I'm 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 still going, but you, you, I'm, I'm gonna try to record it and I'll try to post it this after this evening. Okay, and I'm going to watch it recorded, but I have to go, but I will be watching the recording, and I have enjoyed class today. Thank you so much, and I will see you on next Monday. All right. Y'all have, have a good weekend. You too. All right. So let's move forward. Let me go back to my slides. Let's go back here. All right. Make sure we're through. So that's degrees of freedom. Okay, that is degrees of freedom. So all I'm doing is taking the n minus one. It's, that's the number of values that are free to vary in a data set, right? So again, I gave everybody a particular dessert item, and the only thing that was left was pie, and that was the only thing that um, Wadisha could select. Okay, so that was that's what we call degrees of freedom. N minus one. Uh, so you have a total number of sample. So what will be the the degrees of freedom for a sample of, let me put it on the screen so you all can see it. Uh, on. All right. So if I gave you uh, N, uh, excuse that, 10. What is my degree? If you're talking, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? It might just be me, but I don't hear you. Is it, does it, can everybody else hear me? Yes, no? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. I can hear. Okay. I'm just going to leave and come back. Okay. So if I'm talking about degrees of freedom for this example, what would be my degrees of freedom for n equals 10? What would be degrees of freedom? How many numbers are free to vary in a sample of 10? What is degrees of freedom? How would you solve it? Three minus nine? Yep. yep. It would be, it would be, nine. Right. It would be 10 minus one gives me nine. Good. Okay. So here's another example. Um, I've already kind of kind of reiterated a lot of what we, what we just talked about, but it said, why do we subtract one? Uh, from the number of items, we subtract number one from the number of items because, again, that is the 
uh, again, you have fixed variables, right? And in this example of nine or n equals 10, that means nine different scores are free to vary no matter how you can select any number of values. But that 10th value, once you've chosen your ninth value, it has to be a specific value, right? So again, when you are using degrees of freedom, we're just we're, we're just recognizing or realizing that the first nine scores are free to vary in, in whichever way you want to vary, right? But once you select that ninth variable, one through nine, that tenth variable has to be a specific variable because it has to match um, whatever that mean is for that data set. Okay. So here's an example of another. So it says pick a set of numbers that have a mean average of 10, okay? So some sets of numbers you might pick will be 9, 10, and 11. So that will give you uh, 30. 30 divided by 3 is 10. 8, 10, 12, and 5, 10, 15. All of these sum up to 30. You divide by 3 and you get 10. That's the average, okay? So here are some examples of how you would choose numbers, right? So say I chose nine and then I chose 10, right? Those two variables are free to vary in whichever way that you want to vary them, right? Because you can choose eight and 10, you can choose five and 15, but that last variable or that last score has to be 11 in this case. It has to be 12 in this case, and it has to be 15 in this case in order to get the average of 10, right? So there is a degree of freedom of two in this example because two scores are free to vary in whichever way you select them but once you select those two variables either 9 10 8 10 or 5 and 10 then you have to choose this third you have to select this third variable right it has to be either 11 12 or 15 in order to get the average of 10. okay so once you've chosen those first two numbers in the set that third number is fixed it can't change because you have to get um, that average of 10, okay? I'm going to pause there. Any questions about degrees of freedom and how, how it's been explained? Any questions whatsoever? If you're confused, please ask. Ask a question. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and then we'll go on to the next slide, okay? So here is a question, okay? So it says a sample of four scores has a sum of squares of 24. What is the variance? And again, we're saying sample, right? So a sample of four scores has a sum of squares and SS equals 24, what is the variance? What will be the variance in this equation? Or for the sample? You can put it in the chat if you want. What answer would you get? And again, we're just finding the variance. They gave us a sum of squares, and all I have to do is find the variance. Anybody got any guesses? A. You said it's A? I believe so. Think about it. Think so about you tell me I'm wrong? <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. So if the the sum of scores is 24, yep. an example of four scores, so four would be the little n, right? It would be. But if I'm getting it for a sample, how do I solve the variance for a sample? What's the what's the so, equation? Isn't it in like n minus one? That's it. That's it. So three. Oh, oh yeah, B. Right? No, I, I can't see. 
it would be oh C. C. Yeah, it is C. Good, good, Jada got put it in the chat. Okay, then. Yeah, good, 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 good. All right. True or false? It says a sample systematically has less variability than a population. True or false? You can put it in the chat if you want. I'm going to go with true because wouldn't a population have more because it's the whole thing and then a sample is just a small bit? Yep, that's good. Okay. That's good. All right. And then it says for the second one, the standard deviation is the distance from the mean to the farthest point on the distribution curve. True or false? Something to think about. The standard deviation is the distance from the mean to the farthest point on the distribution curve. Think about what the, what the standard deviation is. False? What somebody said? I said false. Okay, good. The first one is true, right? Extreme scores affect variability. Okay, so the sample doesn't really include a lot of those extreme scores. Um, so it is smaller than um, the population variability. And the second one was false. The standard deviation only extends from the mean to approximately halfway uh, to the most extreme score. Okay, so that is, when we look at that histogram, it's going to have your most extreme score, and then it's going to have, uh, going to be about halfway approximately halfway uh, to the most extreme score, okay? All right. What else do we, do we have here? Let's do, yeah, let's do this example. Yeah, let's do this example right here. So it says, you have found that the following ages and years of four zebras. It says the zebras are randomly selected from 45 zebras at your local zoo. You got um, seven, one, nine, and 14. It says, based on your sample, what is the average age of the zebras? And then what is the estimated variance of the ages? And once you get the variance, also give me the standard deviation. How would you solve for that? Yep, how would you solve for that? And I'll go ahead and start with you. But the first thing you're going to have to do is get your mean. So you got X, 7, 1, 9, 14. Uh, your total should be looks like 10, 17. 31, okay, so that's going to be 31, okay, 31 divided by 4, Thirty-one divided by 4 equals 7.75, And then all we're doing is we have to find the deviations. So we do deviation squared, and I'll show you all this in an example. Square. So it's going to be 7 minus 7.75 7 squared 1 minus 7.75 7 squared 9 minus 7.75. 7 Square and 14 minus 7.75 square. Okay, so it's going to be 7 minus 7.75 7 square. So that's going to be 0 0.565 for the first one. one one 
that should be 45, 5, 6, 2, 5. So the second one, 9, minus 7, minus 6, 5. That should be 1.5625. The third one, 15, minus 7.75, Okay. And then we're riding around to get to the nearest tenth once we get it. So um, the average age in this particular case would be 7.75. The variance, let me add all these up. So 0.5. 625 plus 45 plus 65 plus 1.565 plus 39.0625 equals sum of squares equals 86.75. Okay, right. I'm going to get my sample variance, my degrees of freedom. Minus one, so it should be four minus one gives me three, and then my variance is going to be eighty-six point seven five divided by three, which should give me twenty-eight point nine. And then, if I want to get standard deviation. I will take the square root of 28.92, and that should give me 28.2, should give me 5, All right, let's do this. Anybody have any trouble with this one? Anybody need help? Anybody need me to explain? Anybody at all? Let me go ahead and show you all how to do it. And then we'll move on to the last piece of the lecture. All right, let's go here. Put on my whiteboard. All right. All right, so for the first thing, I'm just going to show you how we did it. So it's going to be 7, 1, 9, 14. Okay. The way I solved it. I summed all of my X's, that gives me 31. I have a little n of four, okay? My mean in this particular case is gonna be 31 divided by four, it's gonna be 7.75, okay? So in order for me to get my sum of squares, I'm going to have the deviation squared. So I just do it this way. DEV, close parentheses, squared. So I go 7 minus 7.75 squared. 1 minus 7. Point seven five square nine minus seven point seven five square and then the last one is fourteen minus seven point seven five square. Okay. Once you do this math, the first one is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0
Six two five. Second one. Give me forty five. Five six two five. Third one. One point five. Six two five. And the last one. Will be thirty nine zero six two five. That's six. Okay. So then my sum of squares. I'm just gonna sum all these up, and you should get eighty six point seven five. Okay. In order to get my variance, my variance, my equation for variance is for the sample, the sum of the squares minus n minus one, or over n minus one, excuse me. Okay, and that's an equal sign here. So in this particular example, it's going to be variance equals eighty six point seven five over four minus one or my degrees of freedom. So that would be 86 and 75 over three. And that should give you 28.9. And if I was asking you to do the standard deviation, all you would do is take your square root over the 28.92, and then it would give you 5.38. Okay. I'm going to pause there. Any questions about that? Any questions? Everybody following kind of what I did. The only change to what we've been doing um, for, for the sample is we're dividing by four or by n minus one. That's the only thing. This is, oh, I need to redo. So this is the, the major difference right here. Okay. Variance, sum of the squares over n minus one. Okay. This. Okay. Any questions about that? All right. So let me finish this up and then we'll get well, you. One question. How Go did ahead. you get 5.38 now? So the variance is uh, 28.92, right? Uh -huh. and, yeah. So in order to get your standard deviation, the only thing that's standard deviation is the square root of your variance. So once you get your, your variance, all you got to do is take the square root of that variance, and then you get the 5.38. So the square root of 28.92 is 5.38, or that's or the standard deviation. Okay, okay, I got you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's go back, share the screen. All right. So that is, again, how to calculate the variance for the sample, how to calculate a standard deviation. Again, the first step, obviously, is to get your mean. Once you get your mean, then all you're doing is in working through getting that variance, you gotta get the sum of the squares, and then also getting the, uh, getting the standard deviation. What you're going to see now is that since I don't have a mean for the population, I'm using the mean for the sample to then estimate. And again, we're talking about an estimated variance. We're getting an estimated variance for the population of zebras. Uh, so we're getting this estimate, right? right? So out of these four zebras, we're able to estimate that the mean age is 7.75 and that the standard deviation is around uh, 5.38, right? We know the variance is around, uh, what was it, 20, 28.92. So we're just making estimates about the population of zebras, this 45 zebras. So we're making an inference or trying to draw conclusions to the population. 
Okay. Any questions about that? That's the that's the main reason we're doing uh doing this. All right. Okay. So unbiased statistic, right? This will be the last one of the last things we discuss. Um, but the reason we use n minus one is because we are trying to create an unbiased statistic for our estimation of the population friendly, right? So the average value of a statistic is usually equal to the population friendly, okay? And so when we have a sample, what we're trying to do is we're trying to estimate the population parameter for the standard deviation and the variance, okay? So the one way that we do that is by using the uh, n minus one, right? When we divide by n minus one, we turn that biased statistic into an unbiased estimate of the population variance. Once we do that, then we're able to systematically uh, draw a conclusion uh, to the population, right? So this bottom bullet down here says, uh, says a biased estimate of the population friend, right? So usually, if we just use regular n for the variance, especially for a sample, we would either overestimate or underestimate the population parameter of the variance of the standard deviation, right? And so by underestimating or overestimating, we want to unbias that estimate, and so we use n minus one to do it. Okay, so that's just one uh, concept um, that we'll we'll continue to talk about uh, as we move forward. But that n minus one is just unbiasing um, that statistic, so that we're able to then draw conclusions to the population. All right, we're just correcting uh, the standard deviation formula by dividing by n minus one. Okay. Any questions about any of this so far? Okay. So here is an example of what a biased statistic looks like and what an unbiased statistic looks like. Okay. So these are samples. Okay. We got nine different samples. Okay. Uh, the first sample has a score of zero and the second score of zero. Second sample has a score of one and the second score of two, right? So the N in this example is two, okay? Because you only have two scores in these samples, okay? So what they're doing for the population, right? You got uh, nine different scores, right? And so in this population, um, excuse me, three different scores. And in this population, we are trying to look at the population parameter, right? And we're trying to uh, estimate the population variance and the population standard deviation, right? So for the first example, right, these are all the means for my samples, right? So the, the, the average um, or the total is 36. Uh -huh. The total is 36 for all of these samples, all right? For a biased variance, and what I mean by a biased variance, instead of using N minus 1, I'm just using N. So in this first example, so let me use the second, okay? For the second example, all they did was they took the mean, and I'll actually, let me draw it up. So let me, let me do this real quick, make it a little easier. I'm just gonna share. So we're gonna do, let's, oh, yeah, let's do this. Copy. All right, let me show you on another screen real quick. This, no, let me close. All right, so for one of the first examples, right? So we had the second sample. And I'm just gonna give you the, the whole rundown, okay? So the second sample, the first score, was zero, the second score was three, right? So in this particular case, my mean is one and a half, okay? So just zero plus three is three, three divided by, um, excuse me, two uh, is one and a half, okay? 
So then if I wanted to get my variance, right, my uh, first deviation is going to be zero minus one and a half, which is going to give me a negative one and a half. Once I square that, okay, that's going to give me 2.25, okay? And then for the second one, zero, I mean, it'll be a three. Let me go back, undo, it'll be three minus 1.5. Just gives you 1.5 squared, which gives me two. Point two five. So let me use that as well. Okay. All right. So two point two five. So all I'm doing for this one, my sum of squares, the sum squares gives me four fifty. Okay, so for a biased variance, this is biased. You get a you get sum of squares is four point five zero over two. Okay, which is essentially just going to give you two point two five. Okay, however. The unbiased statistic okay, is going to be 450 or 4.50 over 1, which is just going to give you 4.5. So when you're looking at the columns on the left-hand side and right-hand side, that is how they got the bias statistic, and this is how they got the unbiased. Okay. Any questions about that? We're going to go back uh, to the slide so we can so I can finish explaining that. So let me go back here. All right. So just like with this one, okay, we're just finding the biased variance and the unbiased variance. And as you're looking at the biased variance and the unbiased variance. You can see that the bias variance is underestimating the variance, right? Versus the unbiased variance, which is not um, it's not underestimating, right? So we got a total variance of 63 and a total variance of 126 for the unbiased variance. Okay. So with a mean of nine, the unbiased sample mean estimates 36 divided by nine equals four. Okay, so that's the actual population mean, all right? For the biased sample variance, 63 divided by nine gives me seven. The actual uh, variance for the population is actually 14, okay? So that's for the biased variance right here, okay? For the unbiased variance, the estimates, 126 divided by 14, um, excuse me, nine gives me 14, which is the actual variance for the population, right? So the unbiased variance matches the actual population variance, okay? Versus the bias sample um, underestimating the variance, okay? So this is just explaining why we do the N minus one so that we get a more accurate uh, representation of the population variance and standard deviation, okay? And this is just giving you an idea of how that happens and why, why it works the way it works, okay? All right, any questions about this at all? And I'll explain it a little more on Monday as well. Um, but I want to kind of work through this before we uh, before we get out of here. Okay. All right. I think I'll end on that. Any questions about anything that we covered? Let me stop sharing. Any questions at all? I did record, so I'll post these this recording on uh, this evening. And so you all have it. If you have any questions, please, uh, please let me know. Okay. All right. But if you all don't have any other questions, you all are free to go. Uh, thank you all for, for tuning in. 
and uh, have a great weekend. Enjoy your homecoming, and I will see you all on Monday. Okay, y'all have a good one. Be safe. All right, bye.